Welcome to A and M Awesome Animals. Hello, everyone. Today we are traveling to Newfoundland, Canada, and we will be talking about the Labrador Retriever. Please don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for future weekly videos. The Labrador Retriever breed dates back to at least the 1830s when St. John's Water Dogs, bred by European settlers in Newfoundland, were first introduced to Britain from ships trading between Canada and Poole and Dorsetshire. These were then bred with British hunting dogs to create what became known as the Labrador Retriever. Today, Labs excel as service and guide dogs, family pets, scenting dogs for the military, customs, and Arizona task force dogs, search and rescue dogs, as well as hunting companions and performance dogs. Labs are intelligent and fairly easy to train, partly from their desire to work with people. They are easy keepers and can become overweight if they are not exercised and food portions adjusted as needed. Labs are excellent family dogs because they do want to be with people, and many do not do well as kennel dogs. Labs are prone to hip dysplasia, laryngeal paralysis, arthritis, seizures, osteosarcoma, also known as bone cancer, lymphoma, and mast cell tumors. Their lifespan is on average 10 to 12 years old. Labradors are a medium-large breed. They should be as long from the withers to the base of the tail as they are from the floor to the withers. The AKC standard includes an ideal weight for males of 29 to 36 kilograms, 65 to 80 pounds, and for females as 25 to 32 kilograms, 55 to 70 pounds. As a large breed, Labrador Retrievers may benefit from a large breed adult or puppy formula. To support a lab's high energy levels, a high protein dog food may also be appropriate. Labrador Retriever puppies will thrive on a puppy food specially formulated to meet their unique needs during the first year of life. Grooming doesn't get much easier than with a lab, but the breed does shed a lot. Buy a quality vacuum cleaner and brush your dog daily, especially when they're shedding, to get out the loose hair. Labs need a bath about every two months or so to keep them looking clean and smelling good. Labs love water. In fact, they were made for it. Their thick tail, sometimes called an otter tail, is used as a powerful rudder. Their webbed feet help them swim fast, and their thick waterproof coats keep them happy even in cold water, like the icy Newfoundland waters where they were first bred. All of these traits make labs great competitors in dog diving trials. Thanks to their intelligence, eagerness to please, and willingness to work hard, labs are individual workers in a variety of fields. They're the, among the most popular choices for service dog work, as well as research and rescue, bomb and drug detection, and therapy dog work. Though they're famously laid back, labs are made to run, swim, and work. Labs that don't receive ample exercise, including at least one long, brisk walk per day, might end up displaying destructive behaviors, like chewing on objects around the house or escaping the yard. Some claim that yellow labs are the laziest of the breed, while well, black labs are the best hunters. But none of these claims are supported by science. Like people, each dog is different, and some breeders develop their stock for its skills in the field, while others are concerned more with conformation to the breed's standard. However, none of these differences directly depend on the dog's color. After becoming the owner of a Labrador Retriever, it is important to register your dog. Why? The American Kennel Club is the only purebred dog registry in the United States that maintains an investigation and inspection effort. The American Kennel Club conducts thousands of inspections each year to ensure the health, safety, and welfare of dogs and the environments in which they live in. There are many other benefits including complimentary first vet visit, 30 days of pet insurance, and eligibility to compete in American Kennel Club events and sports. Labs are practically waterproof. Labrador Retrievers are made for the water. In fact, they're called Labrador Retriever because they were used as working rescue dogs in the Labrador Sea. From their tireless work ethic, webbed toes, to their rubber-like tail, they are perfectly designed to spend long amounts of time in the water. But what makes them ready for the even the chilliest water is their distinctive double layer coat made of an outer layer of dense, straight longer hairs and an under layer of soft, downy like fur that acts as an insulating layer. This undercoat traps heat and keeps water out as it allows the dog's natural oils to repel water, making the coat essentially waterproof. While their coat is perfect for canned water, anyone who has owned a lab can attest to the seemingly never ending piles of fur that gather during its twice yearly shedding. Male labs have thicker and coarser coats than females, and thus they require more grooming. Try to stay on top of the shed by brushing at least once per day. Before its popularity in the United States, the Labrador almost went extinct. In Newfoundland, where the breed originated, the government taxed families for owning more than one dog. Females considered breeders were taxed more heavily, so female puppies were often killed at birth. By the mid-1880s, the breed was nearly extinct. 
Thankfully, English breeders still favor the dog for its hunting abilities and in 1903 were able to have the breed recognized through the English Kennel Club. The American Kennel Club followed suit in 1907 and the dogs have grown in popularity ever since. If you've enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for future weekly videos. See you guys next time. Goodbye!